Now for today we're going to talk about the largest social network out there. We're going to talk about Facebook. Facebook has over a billion users using it. More like one and a half billion users. And Facebook at the moment is pretty unstoppable for good or for bad. And as I've said previously, personally, full disclosure, I don't like Facebook. I don't like the people behind Facebook. I don't like its overreach into our personal lives and various other things, personally. But for business, I love it. For business, it's a great tool to reach an audience. Um, for personal, I hardly log in. But for business, I'm in it all the time for my clients. Remember, I teach this and I do it for a living. So what we want to do is go over to the web browser. Open your web browser. Let's go to Facebook.com. We've seen this before, of course, probably. How many of you have never used Facebook before? It's okay if you haven't. It's okay if you haven't. Uh, we will today. And uh, the big thing about Facebook is that there are two uh, types of accounts, uh, personal and business, like Google+. Plus. Remember on Google+, Plus, we could create a personal account, which you don't need to use at all. You just need to create one. And then you create the business page, or as many as you want. And so here on Facebook, we have the same sort of thing. We need to create an account for personal. You don't have to use it at all, but then you need one to create a business account. So if you don't have a Facebook account, you need to take a moment to create one right here, it'll ask you for some information, password, birthday, and all of that, because you need to be at least 13 years old to use Facebook. Um, so you need to fill this in if you are new. If you have used Facebook before, ask yourself this. Did you create a Facebook for business or for personal? If you didn't know that there is a business version, you probably accidentally created a personal account for your business page. The big differentiator is that personal accounts have friends and business accounts have likes. So if my page has 10 likes, that's business. But if I've got 10 friends on my page, then it's personal. If you created it the wrong way, we can fix it. But when you went here however long ago and you put in Victor's Bakery, you know, if you filled it in as a business here years ago or whatever, that's wrong. You needed a personal account, which you don't need to use, um, but you need one to create the business account. So right now, let's take a moment to either create an account, a personal one, or sign in. Sign in with whatever credentials you have. They could be personal, email, business email, it doesn't matter. But go ahead and either create an account or sign in. And after we sign in, then I'll show you what we need to do. So if you have if you need any help with that, call me over. But just go ahead and either sign up for Facebook or sign in to Facebook. Did everyone get the pink sheet? Did everyone sign in? Yeah, if you could make it come this way, please.
So as we're signing in, again, Facebook is the largest social network. It has about one and a half billion users. It started off in about 2004. It was founded as a uh, as a social network for only college students. Actually, I believe only Harvard college students. Uh, and then it eventually expanded to other <coughs> other colleges, and uh, then it uh, expanded to other educational institutes, and then eventually for the population in total. And then eventually businesses thought, well, can we get on Facebook? Businesses, early businesses figured out social media is not just the place where people share funny cat pictures and such. Social media could be the place where I market to an audience, reach an audience. That's what we've been talking about as the whole concept, <coughs> as the whole concept of, of uh, social media, to reach an audience that um, you can market to. So eventually businesses started to get into this and then Facebook figured out, okay, businesses are getting on Facebook. How can we make money off of that? So we will see here the evolution of Facebook for business. But right now, everyone should have been able to sign in or sign up. Anyone having any trouble before I go on? All right, so um, the big thing is that we've got a personal account and then we need to work with a business profile so Facebook wants us to wants a person to create a personal account and then create and or manage as many business accounts as you would like and we can set up multiple managers I can let let me give you a real world example when when my company gets hired by a client to do their social media me or someone else on, in my team log into our personal Facebook create the business page and then set others as managers I set other people in my company as managers and I set the owner of the business as a manager so then everyone can log in with their own credentials and manage the business page that's what you want. You don't want one login for seven people that are managing the business because one of those seven probably uh, might not practice good cybersecurity. And that one person's account gets hacked, and now the business profile got hacked because one person made a little mistake. One person signed in on free Wi Fi at Starbucks and got hacked. So I'm not sure if I mentioned it before. But I would highly recommend you always avoid public Wi-Fi. You're at the mall, and it, there's, a, there's an item that says, log on to the mall Wi-Fi. You're in Starbucks, it says, log into our free Wi-Fi. You're at McDonald's, log into free Wi-Fi. I do not recommend you ever use free public Wi-Fi. Have you ever noticed that Starbucks, McDonald's, whatever, there's always someone in the corner on a laptop all day long there? They might be checking the traffic that's flying around there for free. So just because you've got free access to Wi-Fi, don't take it. Um, if you buy one of those little personal hotspots from AT&T or Verizon or whatever, that gives you an encrypted Wi-Fi connection for your laptop. So don't get on public Wi-Fi. Even the ones that say enter a password, that's not really any protection either. That's just letting you, that's just preventing you from using their Wi-Fi. That's not encrypting your traffic and your passwords and all of that. So basically, by default, all internet traffic is naked. It's unencrypted flying through the airwaves. And if someone has the skills, they can sit around all day at a location and watch all the traffic fly by and passwords and banking data. So don't use public Wi-Fi. Sometimes you need to. You really need to get online, so you need to get on public Wi-Fi. What I say about that is invest in something called a VPN. 
VPN is virtual private network. Basically, this is security that encrypts your internet traffic, and usually it's not free, even though, yes, you will see VPN free. The free ones are not quite as worth it because they might, they might be slower, they might not be as powerful. The one I recommend, and I'm not affiliated with them at all, but I've used it personally and I really like it, is surfeasy.com. Surfeasy.com, basically a VPN is software that you purchase, that you download, that you install on your laptop, tablet, cell phone, whatever. You install this software, and what happens is the VPN gets between your device and the internet, and in the middle encrypts all your traffic. So even if you get on that public Wi-Fi that I'm telling you not to get on, the VPN will encrypt your traffic. It will keep you safe when you get on that Starbucks Wi-Fi, when you get on that McDonald's Wi-Fi. Question? This one, the average is so, ranges so much, but this one I believe it's like $50 a year, and you can connect five devices. So this is one of the best prices that I've seen. Some are like, you know, $70 a year for two devices. Some are, you know, $5 a year for one <laughs> device limited to 100 megabytes of data. They just range so much. This is the one that I've definitely used and I've researched others. And it's for Windows, Mac, Android, iPhone, everything. Um, one time cost and, I mean, uh, yearly cost, but one time purchase for five devices. Again, I don't work for them. I don't get any kickback or anything for mentioning them. I just want to give you something valuable uh, because a lot of us are very bad with cybersecurity and that's that's normal unfortunately because no one teaches us this. Uh, no one probably ever told you about that. Don't get on Starbucks Wi-Fi. Don't get on McDonald's Wi-Fi. We, we assume it's there. Well, let's use it. But you're not thinking about it in terms of security. Hopefully um, you're getting scared straight from hearing about, oh, Bank of America got hacked, Wells Fargo got hacked, Lowe's got hacked. Well, what am I doing to be secure? Number one thing is be careful with your internet traffic. And so something like this, this VPN, SurfEasy, uh, is supposed to encrypt your traffic. And I've been using it for probably a year now. And um, before that, I would never get on any public Wi-Fi. And now with this, it's much more secure. So what I'm trying to get at, getting back to our original topic, is everyone needs their own login for Facebook. You don't give the login information, my login, my Facebook. I don't give that to all the employees for them to log into the Facebook account to update the coupons. Everyone's got their own login, their own Facebook account, their own login to access the business pages. So let's do this. Everyone should be logged into Facebook. At the top right corner, do you see this little black arrow? I'm sure it's got an official name. I don't know what it is, but there's a little black arrow on the top right corner next to a lock uh, on that little arrow. Click on it. On mine, it says, use Facebook ads, and it's got a list of clients. How many of you see that? Use Facebook ads and, and some other pages. Very few people. That's the point there. I have a personal account and then I can create and manage many business pages. Um, that's, that's how Facebook wants you to use this, because technically, if when you created your Facebook account, and it asked you first name, last name, and you created it as a business there, I put in Victor's Real Estate, birthday, you know, 2010, when I founded the company. That's totally wrong. Facebook doesn't want businesses to create a, a, an account like that. Technically, if you created an account like that, your business page could be shut down. All of these rules that no one reads but everyone agrees to, um, one of them in there is that you're using the right account for the right purpose. If you're using a personal account for a business page, if your business quote-unquote page has friends, that's the big giveaway. You did it wrong, and Facebook could shut you down. I'm not going to turn you in, but Facebook, if they find out, they could shut you down. And we can convert the wrong kind of account to the right account. We'll deal with that later if, if you need that. But for what we need to do is we need to create a business page. 
from the triangle here, do you see manage pages and create page? Mm -hmm. Does everyone see that create page? Go ahead and click create page. Not create groups, create page. Does everyone see create page? Do not have that. For the moment, I, I would just perhaps wait and follow along. Um, Are you ready to create a new account? You still have to create a page. For the moment, I would go to create a page. Okay, let me go see how it works. He already has a business page and where his father belongs to the user. Um, you already have a business page, or would you want to create a page and then remove that? Exactly. Okay. We can, uh, I would still sort of recommend if you've already got a page, let's create one anyway, like this, so that we can see the details, and then we can delete it later. Uh, because when Facebook changes all the time, and maybe now there's features that this one has that your other one doesn't, so it's good to see. Okay. All right, so once we've selected to create a page, we have these six options. And within these options, we have sub-options. So here we have to decide what kind of page do I, what kind of business am I trying to get on Facebook? Is it a local business? Is it an organization? Is it a cause? Is it some form of entertainment? Because you can make a Facebook page for anything. And companies do that. Coca-Cola, for example, made a page for the Coca-Cola parent company, but then they made a sub-page for Coca-Cola, for Cherry Coke, for Powerade, for Dasani. You know, a company can create Facebook pages for every single thing, every single product if they want. It's allowed. Uh, if you did it wrong here, that's not a big deal because we can set this on a, we can set it correctly on another screen. Your challenge right here is, if you're going to create a Facebook page for the first time for your business, especially your business that is on a real location, you will probably want to select local business. But the challenge is, just like when we talked about Google+, it will want to verify that that's your real business. That's what's going to prevent my competitor from claiming my, my Facebook name and putting bad stuff about me that Facebook is going to aut do an automated call to your business's phone to confirm, is this actually you? So you might not be able to do the local business because it's going to ask you for all of this information. Perhaps just to learn this, and again we can delete it later, maybe you just want to do the generic company. Here we'll ask you the address, city zip code and phone number and it'll want to call your business to confirm I'm not at the business so I can't confirm and it'll be cumbersome to be synchronizing with someone on the phone and them at the business and me here and all of that so I'm gonna suggest put it on company organiz company organization or institution and you only have two things to fill out What's your category? And then so see if you can find a category that really works with you. I'm going to do Victor's Bakery. So let's see if I look around. Do I have something about bakeries? No, but I, oh, I see food right here. So whatever business category you fit into best, go ahead and select it. And then company name. Again, we have, like Google+, Plus, company name, and we have the, the vanity address, the custom address, the short URL. At the moment, you will get a name that says something like facebook.com slash pages slash victor slash 1258259. I want to have simply facebook.com slash victor, Victor's Bakery. I won't be able to get that name just yet. Here is just the name of, the, of your company as it will be visible in Facebook. Question. Multiple sites like branches of your business? Um, that's a little bit different. 
you would still sort of like create the parent account and then after that we can create sort of like child locations so yours is a bit of a special case but that can be done let's talk during the, the lab and such but for the moment you can create like the parent uh, page so I will create Victor's Bakery and this name here also is not unique I can create anything I want here such as I'm gonna create the brand new page of the White House sure it'll let me I can create the, the page for UCSD sure on the next screen is where I actually on future screens is where I actually you know confirm my unique address facebook.com UCSD that's taken facebook.com slash White House that's taken so this name here is not unique like Twitter click get started if you've chosen different ones here yours may be slightly different if it's slightly different use your best best judgment to make a selection or ask but I'm going to click get started <coughs> and so here now I've got four tabs at the top four steps about profile favorites audience here is a spot where I can write 155 characters about my business add a few sentences to tell people what your page is about this will help it show up in the right search results you will be able to add more detail later. Facebook has also a built-in search, like we saw on Twitter, like we saw on Google+, like we will see on Pinterest, like we will see on Instagram. All of these networks have a search to search within the confines of its own network. That's completely separate from doing a Google search, a Bing search, a Yahoo search. Those search the whole internet. But every social network has its own mini internet within its own content that you can search. So therefore, this is giving you the chance. What are some things that you can write about your business that might help you get found when someone searches? I'm a bakery. I want to get found. People are going to search bakery, sure. But they might search more directly, you know, um, traditional uh, recipes, traditional, you know, cookie recipes, traditional um, chocolate cake recipes. So my point here is that I'm going to write 155 characters or so thinking about what could people search for. And I will write them as real sentences. I will write them as human readable sentences, not just a list of keywords. That's not what it's asking for. It's asking for real sentences. So I'll write maybe the same thing that I wrote over for my Twitter bio, my Google Plus bio, that's fine if you keep all of that consistent. Family owned bakery in the heart of East Lake, California. We specialize in um, organic ingredients classic recipes blah 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 you can change that however you want whenever you want later when we get back to this editing screen you have 155 characters which you'll probably use up quicker than you think because these are characters not words 155 characters including spaces and punctuation kind of like a tweet You then have a spot to add one link. Um, it could be your home page, it could be a link over to your Instagram, your Twitter, your uh, whatever. You can put a link anywhere else. The point of this again is that at the moment, all of these social networks, they let you advertise and such, but you can't really buy anything off of them directly. I can't sell my cupcakes directly on Facebook, meaning that there is no shopping cart functionality in Facebook. I can have a photo of a cupcake and then it says buy now, but when I click it, it'll go back to my website. At my website, I have the shopping cart. 
So here it's giving you a chance, put in a website to further guide people somewhere. And what I would recommend about this is, let's say I have victorsbakery.com. That's good, but you can take advantage of this to add a landing page. I don't believe I've mentioned landing pages in this class yet, but a landing page is basically a sub page uh, that you guide people to. A landing page, for example, I've got victorsbakery.com slash Facebook deal. I created a page on my website called Facebook deal. And the only way to get to that page is through Facebook. I'm not putting that item in the menu. In my menu on my website, I've got home, about, contact, shop, but I don't have Facebook deal. A landing page is basically a page that you guide people to through some, me some method besides the main menu. You see this all the time, even without paying attention. Let's say you get an email, you're subscribed to some, you know, some shop. Let's say I'm subscribed to, to Fry's. And every week they send me an email about what's for sale. And they have a link there that you can only get to that product if you're subscribed to the mailing list. You can't get to that product anywhere else. Let's say I have you know, an email distribution list of people that have subscribed to my blog. They get a link specifically to a landing page that only they have access to. So here I could, I could do a landing page link. I can only explain what it is. I can't help you build one. You need to go look on your website how to build pages on your site and create a landing page. And I said previously about Twitter and, and Google Plus, well, do I need to do them all? Um, possibly not. You could be a superstar in one of them and then get enough traffic. But hundreds of millions of people use all of these networks. And some people are on Twitter all day long and love it and never touch Facebook. And some people are on Facebook all day long and never touch Instagram. You have to go where the people are at. So then how do you entice people to follow you on all these networks if, uh, if, if you're active on all these networks but someone's only on Twitter? How do you also get them to follow you on Instagram and such? You entice them. This description here. I'm saying this, but I could also say, you know, like us for exclusive content. Like us for preview pictures. Like us for the best deals. So you could take this point also to entice people, why would someone like you? Because a like, basically on Facebook, is like a follow. When someone likes your page, it's like a follow, with caveats, which we'll talk about later. But we've got that space for these little bit of branding. Some of you might have, then, choose a unique Facebook address. Some of you might not. If you don't have that, that's okay. Facebook isn't letting you create a Facebook web address yet, and the purpose of that is to help to try to prevent spam. If I can create as many um, Facebook pages, business pages as I want, and if you can do that, and we're good guys, so can the bad guys. The bad guys can create as many Facebook pages as they want. So what Facebook is trying to do is trying to cut the spam, cut the clutter, and you might not be able to choose your unique name yet. You will after you get about 30 likes. That's how then it see, sees, okay, this is legitimate. Someone created this account, they've got likes, people are paying attention, let's give them the ability to add their name. You might see the ability right away, like me, if you've created other pages before, because it might say, okay, they've done it before, they know what they're doing, they're not a spammer. And sometimes, I don't know what it is at the moment, but I remember sometimes it would be, you need 25 likes to claim your name. And then sometimes I would hear, you need 30 likes to claim your name. And then I've even heard, oh, you don't need likes anymore. But now you need likes again. So Facebook changes all the time. I'm sorry, how did you get to that point? I don't have the, that last paragraph page. You don't have this about the unique address? No. Well, that's what I was just saying, that you're not going to see it for various reasons because you don't have enough likes, your account is brand new, 
and after you get enough likes it'll let you claim your name. So if this is just a test account, if you're just learning this as a test, I would not recommend to claim your name here. If you're going to delete this page eventually, I wouldn't claim the name because you're going to take your own name when you want to do it legitimately later. And even if you delete the page, I think it frees it up for someone else to, to use it later. Don't, don't take the chance. So if, if this is just a testing <coughs> account to learn this, don't claim your name at the moment. You can do it later. Yes? Do you put the dot .com at the end? Nope. So this is just the name? Right. You could, but why? You just, need a dot, you just need the name of your business. Uh, this is different than actual, you know, victorsbakery.com because you're getting facebook.com slash victor. You could put the dot com, I suppose, but that's extra spelling for people to type. Just facebook.com slash victorsbakery. Can I ask something, mm -hmm. something else about the, the search went out with that? It, is it, um, does it work against you if you? like hyphens or uh, in-between words? No, it's smart enough now that it sees words and then can make decisions when people search. And anyway, on this screen, we on this description here, we don't have to, you know, uh, torment ourselves to write the perfect description because this won't be as important of what people search as the actual content that we create. So it is valuable to write something meaningful here, but it's the actual content that we're going to be adding every day, every week, every month, whatever. That's what's going to get us found more than that. Yes? It's not necessary. Facebook is giving us a little space on their website, facebook.com. It's giving us a little peace for ourselves, whatever we want to call it. If we want to call it Facebook.com, this is all business. The point of all of this that we're doing is the business page. So if we wanted to name this Facebook.com slash victorsbakery.com, sure. But you don't really see that in the address. That's not very common in an address when you're on Facebook, on Twitter, etc. It's just the name of your business, like that. Yeah. So at this point, um, I'm not going to put in uh, a unique name, but I will click save. Don't click skip because it'll skip all of this. Save that. I don't. I didn't put a name at the moment. I can put one later. We can get back to that. Just go ahead and save that. And as we've talked about it on previous days, as soon as possible, we want to complete the whole profile of any of our accounts. One of the ways to entice people to follow us is to having a legitimate looking account. To get followers on Twitter, as soon as I can, I want to replace my generic egg icon with my logo. On uh, Google+, Plus, as soon as I can, I want to replace a generic little gift icon with my logo. As soon as possible, I want to replace the generic white flag uh, icon here with my company uh, logo. And I always found it funny that this is a white flag icon. <laughs> so um, I would upload a photo. I don't have my photo of my company with me. I'll have to do it at home. But I would add your company logo as soon as possible. It is a square in this case. So it's, it's, a, it's a little rounded square on Twitter, it's a circle on Google+, it's a square here, but all of them are proportional. So it, they're all basically square-shaped logos. If your logo, again as I said, if your logo is a horizontal logo, it's either going to shrink it and distort it, or crop it and distort it. So you need to have a square logo here for Facebook. And notice that will show up over here. It'll show up on these little icons at the top. This one looks like a vertical photo and you might say, well I thought you said it can only be squares. This is a square but the graphic has been designed with a little bit of extra padding on the edges to make it a square. So if you have a horizontal graphic, vertical or, or, or vertical or horizontal, 
um, a rectangular graphic, you need to find out how to add a little bit of padding to your graphic so that it looks like a square, it doesn't get cro cropped. Yes? Yeah, I'm sorry. I, on the previous page, it's saying that I have to, it says that uh, your Facebook web address must include an alphanumeric character. For the moment, let's skip it because we can add it a little bit later. So at this point here, I'm not going to um, add my picture. I don't have one handy, so I will click skip right there. Then we've got add to favorites. I'm also going to skip this. This has not been very useful at all in my experience. And the point of this is that when you log into Facebook, it'll automatically take you to your personal profile. And on your personal profile, at the left, you will have a bunch of favorites such as the news feed, messages, Candy Crush, etc. You will see things that you want to see quickly on Facebook. I, and here it's telling us, why not add your page to your favorites so you can access it quickly? I don't believe that. I don't trust it. In personal experience, I have accidentally posted something that I thought that was for the business to personal and vice versa. I've accidentally posted something that I thought was going personal to the business. Because sometimes it's not too obvious. Am I on my personal account? Am I on my business account? And I know that that mistake, for me at least, has happened when I have clicked on my page under favorites. They might have fixed that now because that's a big issue. So what I'm saying is don't bother putting this into your favorites. And I'll show you the foolproof way that you will know, am I on personal? Am I on business? I'll show that a little later. So don't worry about putting your business on favorite. For me, it has not turned out well. They, they might have fixed it, but I'm not taking the chance. I'm going to skip that. And this page four here is something new that wasn't around when you created a Facebook page if you did it, like, let's say, a year ago. This is a preferred audience, a target audience. Um, the the growth of Facebook has been phenomenal. So many people use Facebook, so many demographics, age ranges, so many different people use Facebook. The great thing about Facebook is that there's so many people we could reach. The bad thing about Facebook is there's so many people we could reach. Because there are so many people, we're a needle in a haystack. How do we stand out? How do we get found? That's what all of today will be about, of course, how to get found likes how to get traffic and all of that on Facebook. But one of the things that Facebook is helping us with is this. Who's your target audience? Who would really care about your Facebook page here? In my SEO class, we have a lesson where we talk about it, planning about your target audience. Because every legitimate company, every big company, every successful company thinks about a variety of aspects uh, about how to reach the right customer, the right audience, the target audience. Every company should be thinking about a target audience. Let's say I'm a bakery. Who's my target audience? I might say everyone. Everyone's going to love my, my baked goods. No. What about the people that are, you know, on a low-carb diet? What about the people that are, uh, you know, not an allergen intolerant? What about the people that are lactose intolerant? What about the people that don't like chocolate? No. So no, not everyone is going to like my business. I think everyone's going to like my business. But my target audience, as I said on the previous screen, I'm focusing on people in East Lake that care about, you know, family-owned businesses. I'm trying to go for a specific target audience. You want to do that. You want to think about that. Not everyone is going to want your product. I hate to break it to you. Not everyone is going to uh, want to hire you as a realtor. Um, not everyone is going to want to hire you as a web designer. Because there's so many to choose from. So in the SEO class, if you take that class, which is currently running every Monday. If you'd still like to come, I've still got space. Monday's 12.30. Um, we talk about target audiences, and here's his face with helping us with that. Who am I targeting? We've got location, age, gender, and interests. Um, first of all, everyone in this location, people who live in this location, people recently in this location, people traveling to this location, Students often ask, how does Facebook know this? Facebook knows a lot about you. Every time it asks you, how was your day? What did you do today? What did you watch? What's fun? 
and you're answering all of that gladly, it's building a huge <coughs> profile about you. And so for personal, I don't like that. I don't like that it knows so much about me. But for businesses, I love this. I love to know that I can target these age ranges with these locations and interests. For businesses, this is great. For personal, I don't like it. But this is smart enough to know because let's say someone is in uh, someone is in Seattle and they want to take a San Diego vacation. They're on Facebook. They're on they're they're at home in Seattle. They're on Facebook and they're saying, "I'm going to go visit San Diego." They're in San Diego. They're here in San Diego, chatting with their friends back home and saying, "I'm in San Diego and I love it." Well, Facebook knows all of that. Facebook records all of that. And so here, this is how I can target people that don't live in San Diego but are traveling here because people give that information freely. Yes. Does it also track your location? Yeah. Yeah. Short answer, yes. Long answer, yes. So uh, that's why I don't even have Facebook installed on my phone anymore. So everyone in this location, etc. Include, exclude. So you've got this great business. You want to think about what locations would really care about that business. Especially if you've got a physical location, the people in Norway are not going to care about your business on Main Street San Diego. Maybe even the people in Tijuana are not going to care about your, your business on Main Street San Diego. Maybe the people in Los Angeles are not going to care about your business on Main Street in San Diego. So here you can do locations like San Diego. Do you mean San Diego, California, South San Diego, Rancho San Diego, San Diego, Texas, San Diego, Venezuela? So, I mean, San Diego, California. And you can add more than one location. So right here, this is basically Facebook. Help me. Show my page. Make it more relevant to people in San Diego with a 25-mile radius. Sorry, Escondido. So... I can increase that radius, I can decrease the radius 50 miles, so we hit up to Oceanside, down to Rosarito and such. Let's say my business is really valuable for people in San Diego and um, Los Angeles. I can do that. Now don't go crazy here and put 12 locations. There is then a point of diminishing returns. Um, right here, in general, in general, we're making our, uh, our page targeted to these locations, but we can still target, be very pinpoint, whenever we post anything, we can make a certain post target a certain location, outside of the locations we've chosen here. It's very robust, very powerful. I, I do like this for businesses. So you don't want to put a bunch of locations here. You know, three, I would say, is the limit. Although you can put more than that. You can also be much more... You know, I'm going to cancel those. I, maybe I, I want to be larger than this. Maybe I do want to just simply put California. I'm going to target everyone in California. That's doable as well. California and Delaware. Sure, I can do that. Just about any location. I think we can put zip codes also. Let's say 91914. Yeah, so right there, I'm going to target that zip code. Question. What if you're virtual and you want to access other online businesses as well? So your business is, is sort of like business to business? You sell to other businesses? You still have to sort of think, though, are you targeting Japanese language businesses, English language businesses? Uh, Portuguese language businesses. So there is the ability to select USA, you know, United States. Everyone in the United States, that's the other businesses that I'm targeting. Question? So that was kind of my question is that does this limit it? Like I, I sell mostly in the United States, I mean in San Diego, but I sell throughout the United States and I sell mostly in the morning jobs as well as men. So does it limit it when you, when you um, put in locations no. or genders? It doesn't limit it, it just focuses it. Okay. So whatever you're posting will be focused more to those demographics, but you are al you always have the ability to expand the reach or decrease the reach. 
Um, this is just sort of to help you try to reach your target audience. And we've all got special cases sometimes, but think about you know what's specific enough that I could reach a potential audience, but you're still always able to go outside of those boundaries. Okay. For the moment, my bakery, I'm going to target San Diego because I've got, I've got a bakery here in East Lake, and this encompasses it all, even down over to the islands. So I could do include these people or exclude these people. Sometimes you, you have to do that as well. You can't sell a particular product in a certain location. You know, there are certain locations in the U.S. Let's say I've got an online uh, alcohol ordering business. There are some locations in the U.S. that you cannot order alcohol through, through the mail. So I would have to exclude these particular locations from seeing my content. So location is one of the things that I should um, target. Then we've got uh, ages. We have here between 13 and 65 plus. So you might say, I want to reach as many people as possible. So I'm going to change it to 13 to 65. Well, again, specify, target audience. You, you don't want to simply say, everyone will love my product, everyone will buy my product. Not really, unfortunately. That's what modern marketing is, finding the audience that cares about your product, because there's so much competition. And so choosing everyone like that is like choosing no one. You can, of course, go out of these ranges. This is not going to limit you. But I'm going to say, in my case, my bakery is being targeted to people 30 and up. You know, I don't care about teenagers buying my products. They could if they want, but that's not my target audience. I don't care about 20-year-olds. Uh, not that I don't care, but these are the ones that I'm targeting more directly. And I can have it pretty narrow, you know, 30 to 35 years old, sure. But then later when I post something, I could then spread the reach of that. I'm not limited to this. This is just a starting point to help me reach an audience. <laughs> Same thing with gender. Targeting women, targeting men, or all. That one, probably I usually recommend keep it on all unless, you're, uh, unless your product really is targeted to women, really is targeted to men. Specify that one or keep it all. And then this is really good here, interests. Every time someone's on Facebook, let's say someone really likes a certain TV show, and the TV show keeps saying, like us on Facebook. And then you go on Facebook and you like them on Facebook. You've shown an interest in something. You can like TV shows. You can like uh, movies. You can like books. You can like video games. You can like everything. You can like people, you know, celebrities. You can like topics. You can like chocolate on Facebook. There's all of these things that someone can like on Facebook. And all of that is a huge database that we can tap into right here. Our particular business, who are, are the people that might really like us? If I don't have an idea yet to type here, click on Browse Interests. Here we go. Business food. If you hover over food, for example, it says that <coughs> one billion people have shown some interest in the generic concepts of food and drink on Facebook globally. And there's 1.5 billion people using Facebook. So here I'm saying, yeah, show my page more targeted to people that love food and drink, 1, 1 billion people. That's not targeted enough. If you click the triangle to open that category, OK, I've got alcoholic beverages, 372 million. Beverages, 673. Cooking, 425. Cuisine, food, etc. You want to drill down to the more specific categories. Food, you think, yeah, I'm going to reach a billion people. No, you are not specific enough. I want to see, you know, bakeries. Where would bakeries fall into? Let me look under cooking. Maybe right there, baking. One, 143 million people. Only 143 million people. That's a great amount of people to, to try to reach rather than the billion. And I can add more than one. So if I click baking, I'm trying to reach people that are interested in baking. After that, it might give me more suggestions. Frying, barbecue, flavor, <coughs> culinary art. 
as you select a big category and it gives you subcategories as suggestions, it might be a good idea to take them, if they make sense, because here's Facebook trying to guide you to the people. Cake decorating. Cake. Pie. Chocolate brownie. I can add as many as I want here. I think it recommends... It doesn't exactly say, but on another screen I believe it says 4 to 10, or maybe 6 to 10. So here I would think about, you know, 5 or so interests. And again, this is a lot of things. For example, The Walking Dead. If people love that TV show, I can reach that audience as well. Anything that's on Facebook, basically someone can like it. It's an interest, and lots of people have also liked it. Let's say, okay, baking. I want to reach people that like Alton Brown, the chef. There we go. I can select Alton Brown. Uh, that's a reach of 2 million right there. And then it recommends Jada de Laurentiis, Bobby Flay, etc., etc. Yeah, I want to. I want those as well because these are people that like to watch the cooking channel, people that like these chefs. I fancy myself that my business is on par with them, my bakery, so I want to reach this audience. We can further edit this later after we create the account. We can always fine-tune this however we want. This, these are demographics that we're applying for the whole channel, and we'll, able, we'll be able to apply demographics directly to every post. Everything can be shared specifically. So, any questions on this screen? Yes. What's that? This one that I've uh, added here is attached to San Diego, so I can't move it. But if I click drop pin, it'll put a brand new pin so I can put it in a location that perhaps is not found in the menu. Yes. How would you target like um, home owners? I might have to try really hard and type homeowners. Future military homeowners, homeowner associations, homeowners, Canadian homeowners, today's homeowners. Not to be glib, but that could be a way. Simply that keyword, you can type any keyword. Someone probably has an interest in that right here. I'm interested in this Canadian one. Twenty one thousand people right there. That's a good amount of people to reach as an audience. So it's basically if there is no suggestion or browse, start typing it and I'm sure it'll appear and then pick the best one that works. Any other questions on this screen? If this looks good here, then go ahead and click Save. Once you click save, then it switches you to your screen about your actual business with a little quick tour here. It says getting around. Everything you need to manage your page is in these tabs. So we have these new tabs on top here that we're going to explore each one of them, what they're about and such. But we've got our main navigation menu here for our page of Victor's Bakery. Next. It says like your page. Show support for the work you've done. You've done. For the work you've done setting up. Show support for the work you've done setting up. That kind of sounds weird grammar to me. Setting up your page by liking it. When people visit your page, they will see that at least one person has been there and So likes. Likes are like follows. And I think I've said it before, but in social media, in most endeavors actually, SEO and such, popularity breeds popularity. If something is popular, it will continue to get popular. Word of mouth and such. All of these networks help you get more views and such by when someone likes your page, your page could show up on their timeline and more people can see it. Have you noticed that? You're on Facebook and it says, oh, Janet liked chocolate. Well, what she did was she clicked on the chocolate page, like, and now you saw that. That's giving you an incitement. Maybe I want to click chocolate too. Maybe I want to click also, you know, um, that lawyer. So getting likes helps you 
reach more people. You on your own personal account, you probably have friends and connections there. You're going to like your own page. Your friends and connections could see that. And they can further like your page. We can make it more obvious for our friends to like our page a little bit later. But I'm going to say, yeah, I'm going to like my own page. There's going to be at least one like. You might see help people take action on this page. I'm going to close that for the moment. But here, here we've got a page. Question? Um, is there a way, because on my Facebook, there are some particular groups I do not want to be associated with, mm -hmm. that they like the page. I would have liked few likes because it's a new site. Is there a way for me to, I would like to see the like sign, but I don't want their name showing so that you know, no one can trace where it's came from? Unfortunately, I don't believe so. If you liked, if you like a page, it w there will be a connection there. It doesn't seem at the moment that you can like things anonymously. Facebook just doesn't have that. Facebook wants real people to use it in a real way, and at the moment, it doesn't really give us anonymous options at all. So my only option then is to block the person or group them. But can I, you know, by the time I block them, can I block other people that they were connected to this group that I do not want to block? On that also, I don't think so because it, this is this is trying to be such an open environment for good or for bad. The, the yeah. philosophy of, of the people behind Facebook, that's why I don't like it for personal. Their philosophy is that there should be no privacy, that everything's open and everyone should love everything and share everything. No, there should be privacy. But the people behind this feel, no, it's all good. Let's all share everything. Everything's here. Uh, and so unfortunately, no, if, if the genie gets out of the bottle, if someone liked it and then that gets shared to other people, it's pretty hard to, to get that under control. So we've created this page. At the top it tells me I'm on Victor's Bakery. Great. Um, what you want to do is um, click on the, the Facebook logo here on the top left. Just click on the Facebook logo for a moment. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you this thing that I'm saying about it can be difficult sometimes to tell. Am I on my personal or am I on, or am I on my business? I clicked on the Facebook logo and it took me to my personal account. How do I know this? Maybe. At the top it's saying I'm using this as Victor. At the top it says I'm logged in as Victor, the personal account. Well, I clicked the Facebook page, so that must mean it took me to personal, right? No, even when I was on Victor's Bakery, it says I'm using it as Victor. This is what I'm saying, that sometimes it's hard to tell. Am I on my business page as my business, or am I on my business page as the person? And there have been times, on accident, that I added something to a client's business page as the person Victor. So I will show you here how to make sure you're always correctly on the right screen to avoid that issue. Because it may be a big deal or it may not be a big deal. Um, it may be a really big deal that why is Victor posting on this business page? Is there some sort of relationship here or some sort of collusion or something? Your name will not automatically show up on the Facebook page unless you make it obvious, like I did with that like. Your name will not show up on that page anywhere unless you go to the settings somewhere and let it show my name there as a manager. So that's why you're seeing that I've got all of these other businesses that I'm running, but my name does not show up on their, on their pages unless I let that happen. So click on the Facebook logo at the top left. This takes me back to my personal profile. See, there's everyone saying, why aren't you on Facebook? But I'm on my personal profile. My name is there and my picture. That's my personal one. The foolproof way to go from personal to business is to click on the black triangle at the top right. And if you've got your business page listed right there, use Facebook as my business. Click on it. I manage multiple ones. Sometimes it doesn't show up here. There's only three. Click on either See More 
for Manage Pages. Let's just be obvious. Click on the black triangle and click Manage Pages. The black triangle, Manage Pages. Here's all the pages I'm managing for all the various clients. And if I want to go back and make sure that I'm editing one particular client, what do you think you do here? Log in. Log in. Log in to edit that client, that page. You can create multiple pages for yourself. One page for this location, one page for that location, one page for the parent company, one page for this particular product, etc. You click on the triangle at the top right and you click Manage Pages. So then when you click Log in here, now notice what changed at the top. Victor's Bakery. I'm using Victor's Bakery as Victor's Bakery. And even if I click the Facebook logo at the top left, it still says you're using Victor's Bakery. If you click the Facebook logo, you see the latest posts. If you click your Facebook company page name, you see your page as people see it. So there's two screens here, always confuses people. There's the, there's the main timeline where you see all your posts and other people's posts. And then there's your company page where it's only your stuff. Victor's Bakery, click on the name of your business to make sure you're on your business. Question? When you drop down the uh, black triangle, you already saw Victor's Bakery. bakery. <laughs> no, you're, but you're right. Let me show you that. Let me show that. If I go back to personal and then I click, I do see Victor's Bakery. Yes. Because yeah. if I saw that, did I need to go to the manage pages? Or can I no. It? If you saw it directly like that, just click on it. That also works. All of you probably only have one page you're managing. So that's why you see one thing. Or if you've got, you know, less than three, because this will only show three. But I, that manage a lot of them, I go to Manage Pages and select the one from the list of 10 or 20. But if you see your page right there, just go ahead and click on it. That's fine too. And to confirm, I'm going to click it. I'm running Victor's Bakery. We're going to do one thing and then we'll take a break. Um, we're going to uh, start a little bit of the, of the branding of the page. I've said it for Twitter, I've said it for Google+, I'm going to say it for LinkedIn, I'm going to say it for Pinterest. You always want to set up your page as completely as possible before trying to get likes and follows and connections and all of that. You want to have a more legitimate page to entice people to follow you. This is not legitimate, the white flag. Everyone's got that, every spammer has that as soon as they create a brand new Facebook page. You want to add your company photo there as soon as possible, your company logo. I don't have it with me, I'll do it later. I want to add also a nice graphic on top here to entice people. That could be a graphic of the photo of your, of your team members. It could be a photo of your products. It could be anything you want here. I don't have a photo at the moment to add, a cover photo, so I'll add it later. What we can do for the moment, though, is do you notice you've got two menu bars? page, messages, etc. And then you've got timeline about photos, etc. We have different screens to work with. I'll explain what all of these screens are, of course, soon. But for the moment, click on About right here. And even if you already have a page that exists, take a look at this also. Go to About, and this is all this About information you should fill in to help you get found. You may have more or less of these boxes to fill in than me. That depends on what kind of organization you chose. Was it a local business? Was it a brand? Was it a celebrity? Was it a product? So you may or may not see the same things that I'm seeing. That's okay. Fill it in as best as you can. Usually these things have a little help button somewhere. But here is where I can go, oh, I put it on the wrong thing. I didn't want food and beverages. I wanted whatever. Hover over that and click Edit. You can change your whole category. If you've chosen the category of location, 
local business, that is. If you've chosen local business, that will give people the ability to rate you on Facebook, to give you stars, one stars, five stars, whatever. And it will give the ability for people to check in to your business. What that is, is that someone's on their mobile device, they go to your business, they're on Facebook, they see your business on the Facebook map, they click check in, simply to say, I'm here. You may think that's silly, but hundreds of millions of people do that. Hundreds of millions of people are checking into businesses to show that I'm here. So if you want that ability, it's under local business. Question? Uh, why does it say enter your Facebook address? Aren't we creating that here? Right now, my Facebook address is facebook.com slash victorsbakery1574809, etc. Yours is probably also some weird address like that. Oh, that's up at the top? Yeah. So that's our default address, gibberish. Okay. I want a nice, short, friendly name. That's what enter your Facebook address says. Uh -huh. And not everyone is going to be able to do this. If you see it on yours, you might want to do that. But if this is a test account, you might not want to do that. Or accidentally put in my name, I erased it when you said don't do that, if you're not ready to go, and it took it. So it's, it's already, I've created an account I'm, I'm willing. So I don't want to give up my business name. Exactly. So might as well keep it. Yeah. Might as well keep it. So uh, there's your page info that you should fill in. If you set this as local business, you will have, you will be found on the Facebook map people will be able to check in and people will be able to rate your business. You might want that, you know, because we have ratings on Yelp, we have ratings on Google search, we have ratings on Facebook. Those things matter now to SEO. You might not have thought about that, but search engine optimization, part of that is people's opinions of you. Because if you are a spammer, you're gonna get one star ratings, the search engines will see that and not rank the spammers very well anymore. But you as a legitimate business with a real business want ratings and opinions from real people. Search engines will see that and they will rank you higher than the competition. That's a local business. You can change your, your name. That's your name simply of how it displays in Facebook right here. That is not your address, which is some of you might have the ability to enter a Facebook web address. If I try to edit it, some of you might say you can't do it yet because you need like 25 likes or 30, whatever the current minimum is. Start date. This is basically what's the very first post you want us to put, like your very first hello world post. Start date. You can select this is the date that this entity was born, founded, started, open, created, launched, whatever. There's no right or wrong answer here. I could say Victor's Bakery was founded in 1999. Or I could think about it in terms, this Facebook page was launched in 2015. That's optional. That's start date. Address. If you've got an address, if you're listed inside of another place, that's optional too, but if you're able to fill that in, you should. Address, city, zip code. Note, if you add a valid address, people will be able to see and check into your page using Facebook Places. The Facebook map. If I'm on Facebook and I search taco shops, and I've got a taco shop, they can see me on the map if I put in an address. So that's not your home address your home address. You don't want that really to show up for people on Facebook, do you? You want your business address, if you've got a business address. All of these are optional, but you should fill them in if they make sense. There's my description. I can set it again. Impress them. Don't worry about impress them. This is only related to certain countries. Austria, Germany, Switzerland. This is basically, they've got some law, I suppose, where they have to disclose who is behind this Facebook page because it might be useful for them. This political party's Facebook page is funded by this organization. But that's only important if you are dealing with traffic of Austria, Germany, or Switzerland. So you don't have to put anything under impression. Long description. Here you've got like probably a thousand words to write. 
a thousand characters. Again, you don't have to stress to put in the perfect description here. All of this stuff here is useful for you to get found, but what is much more useful will be the actual content that you publish on a regular basis. If you've got about if you've got a website and you've got an about page on your website, you can copy some of that into here and you're done. If you don't know what to write here, think about it and fill it in at some point. Again, you may or may not have some of these that I do, that's okay. Mission. What's your mission statement? In the SEO class we talk about that, but this is basically a concise paragraph about what are you in this business for? What are you what are you out there in the world for? The mission of uh, victorspets.com is to um, uh, get donations to help save the animals, you know, whatever my mission of my business is. Founded, again, you can fill in a little bit of founded information. Do you have any awards, products? This is, to me, honestly, products is pretty worthless. I remember years ago, products was a little more useful, but now it's just like bullet points, a list of products, but these are not clickable. These are not, you can't sell anything on this. It's just a list of products, and it's, I don't think it's that useful. You could help you get found, but they're not really active and clickable and usable. Phone number for your business, email address for your business, or you don't have an email. Website, there's my website. One website at a time official page. You usually don't have to deal with this one. Let's say I'm creating yet another Justin Bieber fan page. I can do that and then I can select here. This is a representation of the official Justin Bieber page. So you don't have to do that for yourself. You are your official representation of your own page. This is as if you are creating a page as a fan page for something else, some other entity. So pretty self-explanatory here. This about information is important to add as soon as possible. And I see they've got something new, add shop here. We'll see that later. Ooh, this is new. So anyway, at the moment, um, let's take our first break. Uh, you should take some time at some point to fill in about info. When we come back after the break, we'll look at the rest of the screens and and, and tips and advice, and then posting and how to get more likes and all that good stuff. It's 10.35. We'll be back at 10.45.